in order to live a spiritually dynamic life, meaning you got angels over here singing. You got dead people walking into your room trying to talk to you. You've got visions and prophecies and you've got clairvoyance and all of that sounds really cool, but are you ready for that? If you have any fear inside of you, you've got to deal with that before you start dabbling in all of this other stuff because spirit doesn't want to frighten us in any way. I'm teaching a course in a month called the intuitive intensive. And part of what we're going to be talking about is mediumship. And one of the things I always say is that I've, I've worked with a lot of mediums who say, I really want to expand my mediumship. I really want to be a medium, but I'm very afraid. What if I see a dead person? <laughs> and I, I always say, well, <laughs> what are you talking about? You know, that's kind of what mediumship is. But if you're afraid to see dead people, or if you're afraid of how you will react if you actually do have an angelic communication or have an interaction with an angel. You got to deal with the fear first because you always attract what you are. You attract according to your signal. And if you have anxiety or fear, then you're going to be attracting energies. And we can say entities, although that sounds scary and it's not, but we're going to be attracting according to that. So deal with the fear first. How do you do that? How do you get rid of the fear to open your psychic abilities or to which is, I just, I don't even like saying it that way. How do you get rid of the fear in order to step into a spiritually evidential life? Well, you know who it is that you are. You know the power position that you occupy. Do you, do you know that? I've talked to many people who are really afraid because they have strange encounters with shadow people or they saw a spirit or there's something in their house or they've got thought forms and they're freaked out. That's because they don't know who they are. That's because they don't understand that they're sovereign in their space. That's because they don't know that they can speak to that space and command it to align according to their intention and desire. That is who we are. All these other things we're talking about, angel signs and stuff like that, they're fun, but that's what Christ called signs and wonders. They're not the point. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and all these other things are added unto you. Now, don't get upset. I'm not here... <laughs> If you know me at all, you know I'm not here preaching Christian orthodoxy. Um, but I, I came up through Christianity. I have That's my paradigm and frame of reference and the language through which I speak. But the principles are the same. What Christ is saying there is focus first on your spiritual connection, on identifying exactly who it is that you are and what you're connected to. And all these other things are byproducts, effortless. They come to you in an effortless way. And so it's about identifying who it is that you are. Because once you understand that, you see, you understand that you have every right and are empowered to be fearless, to live fearlessly in your life because you created it. You created this playground, this landscape in which you're now living in this incarnation. You didn't just happen to end up here. Woe is me. Why was, why did my parents think this was a good idea to have me in this crazy prison planet, you know, living at this time in earth's history? No, 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 no. You create, you had a hand in the creation of this dimension, this universe, and this entire construct. You wanted to come here. And before you got here, you planned it all out. We call this the soul's blueprint. It's much more comprehensive and cosmological than that, but you did have a plan and you built into that plan, everything you would need in order to succeed and thrive and hit the highest mark of that blueprint. Now, do we always hit the highest mark by the time we check out and pass on? No. A lot of us hit about 20% of the things that we wanted to do when we got here. Some 50%. Some are up there 75, 80, 90, 100%. They came here and they did it, probably because they've been here a million times before. But when we charted this course for ourselves, we built in the resources that we needed. See, your higher self, which is omnidimensional, meaning it exists outside of universal structures and architecture, it doesn't, it's not constrained to anything like that because it was created by source energy and the archangelic. That's a whole nother thing. That higher self dispatched you into this incarnation because it wanted to experience itself in this cool playground, kind of like the kid playing Mario and Luigi. That's the only reference I have because I'm old, right? He's playing Mario and Luigi and he's found Yoshi and the princess and he's fighting Bowser and he's going through this landscape, but he's controlling it and he can stop the game when he wants to. He can change the game when he wants to. You are the creator of the landscape. And because of that, you know where all the Bowsers are. You know where all the treasure is. You know where all the challenges are. You actually have that inner homing system right within you, which is what gives you license to be fearless. 
and to occupy the power of who it is that you are. Now, that's the good stuff, honestly. That's what Christ is talking about. Seek first that. Like, get in touch with that power, your divine power, Emmanuel, Christ with us, God with us, God in us. The kingdom of heaven is within you. If we can walk around the planet being that and truly believing that and speaking from that and moving from that and being from that, that's when everything arranges around us. And also, by the way, when you really get in touch with your I am, your power, your divinity, your sovereignty, all these evidences come in very, very quickly. Things like angelic communication, things like synchronicities, things like patterns, things about doors opening for you before you even get into the room and need them to open for you. All of that happens super effortlessly. You just flow into it. And it's because you're occupying this higher vibration of who it is that you truly are. And you'll find that when these cool things happen, like a spirit rambles into your room and tries to talk to you, something that would startle and fascinate somebody else. It's mundane to you. It, you don't even care that much that there's angels all around or that you can see things and feel things and know things. And maybe you're a healer and you can do all this great work. It's not the point. The point is staying ever in that eternal connection. Can I get an amen?